online, we thank God if this is your first time tuning in, put new guests in the comment section. That way we can properly greet you. We thank you for being here. Amen. Say new creation faith. New creation faith. Turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 in the Amplified. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Father, we thank you for this word going forth with power, clarity, and understanding that it would bring fruit to our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 in the Amplified. New creation faith. I want to make the statement that Jesus came and died for you to get back to this new creation image. Many of us only have a revelation that Jesus died so that we might go to heaven. And we understand that Jesus died so that we can go to heaven. And that in him, because he is eternal life, we have eternal life. But if Jesus wanted you in heaven so badly, the moment you got saved, he would have just took you to heaven. But obviously, he has plans for you on earth. We understand that because the, he teaches his disciples how to pray, and he says, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in other words, Jesus is letting his disciples know that you have an assignment and a mandate to manifest heaven on the earth. Now I want you to look at it differently because sometimes and it's okay to have a big global view, heaven on earth, but you earth. So you're supposed to be manifesting heaven in your life. Heaven in your family. Heaven in your finances. Every aspect of your life, the kingdom is supposed to manifest in your life. And when you call on the kingdom of God, it automatically brings heaven into your situation. Jesus died to get you back to this new creation image in faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any person, say any person, any person. is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation. A new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. Say any person. Any person. Say any person. any person. Any person that comes into Christ, the anointed one and his anointed is a new creation. A new creature altogether. A, a species of creature that has never been seen the likeness of you before. So that means when you understand who you are, there ain't nobody like you. <laughs> Say, I'm a new creation. It also means that you, really, God has created a new race of people. So we be talking about this race, this nationality, this ethnic group and all that. But don't you know that you are part of a new race? It's called the God race. And this race, strap on your seatbelt, is a new race of Adams. Don't let that trip you up because Adam represents man, mankind. Jesus is called the last Adam. So that shouldn't bother you. 
If he called the last Adam, where'd you call? You must be an Adam too, right? If he the last Adam, I didn't say the second Adam. The scripture never called him the second Adam. He called him the last Adam. Because there won't be another one like him. There ain't no other Adam coming after him. Why is this important? Because if we are a new race of Adam, then we need to know how he operated. And he operated. Adam, when God formed, he created man and put man in a body. That's why they're called a human being. A being is a spirit that has a soul. A human is a body. So a human being is a spirit in a body. That means everything to you because human beings or man is the only one to have dominion on the earth. So that means a devil is not a human being, nor is a devil a man. That lets you know then that you got dominion over devils. Now, when he created man, spirit, created, then he made two different things. He created spirit and then he made him. That means he formed him out of the dust of the ground. And he breathed the spirit of life in him and man became a living soul or a speaking spirit like God. I said man became a speaking spirit like God. Here we go. When they saw him, who was they? Obviously the angels. They couldn't tell the difference between Adam and God. So if you in Christ and you a new creation, that means the whole universe really don't know the difference between you. When they see you, they see God. No. Adam operated in superior knowledge. God brings to him the animals And he said, whatever you name them, that will be his name. Now, how in the world does Adam have that type of capacity to name every single animal? But Adam was what? Created. Come on, somebody. He was what? Say it again. He was what? He was what? In Christ, you are a new created. Say, I'm a new creation. So in Christ, you're a new creation means it is the same exact thing. You are the same exact type of person that when God created man, that's you all over again. Old stuff has passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. Psalm 8 says, can I just flow, please? Who is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you care for him. For you have made him, man, who? Man. Creation. Made him a little lower than the angels translated in the Hebrew Elohim, which means God. You have made man a little lower than God. I'm trying to tell you who you are. Because if that's you, old things have passed away. Why are you new still doing old? I'm going to 
to tell you the quickest way on how things can never work in your life if you knew is still trying to do old. You got to be new doing new. The old you is gone. I said the old you is gone. That old you with the stinking thinking. The old you that get angry quick. The old you that get jealous. The old you that's insecure. The old, he did. You are a new creation. Old things passed away. You came to the altar, whatever church you was in, and you gave your life to Christ and you walked away and then you just probably said, I'm saved. Do you know what really happened? As soon as you said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be my savior, you were created on the spot. Now that's some stuff. Because you created on the spot, but you still look the same. But in the actuality, in the spirit, you not the same. In the spirit, you just got healed. In the spirit, you just got dominion. In the spirit, you just overcame death. In the spirit, you was actually raised from the dead. Now, if you was raised from the dead in that moment, what has dominion over you that's still dead, but you alive? Nothing! Why is this important? Because if you still trying to use faith, operating old is a fake. Let me ask you this question. Old you using faith versus new you using faith, which one you think gonna work? But if I don't have a revelation that I'm new, that I'm a new creation, let me tell you something, I use this terminology of restore, you know, that's one of my uh, favorite things. I know in one of um, Pastor Joy's messages, she said, Pastor Juan always talking about restoration. I love restoration. That's my, <laughs> it's just a part of who. But I use this terminology. Being, y'all ready? Being restored means back, going back to your original intent. But God showed me something different. So if original intent, Lawrence, can you stay right there? Just face the people. This is Adam. This is mankind. And in the beginning, God did all this. He blessed them. He said, be fruitful, all that stuff, right? So that's the original intent. That intent hasn't changed just because stuff happened. That original intent never changed even though Adam fell. It never, never changed even though sin and death ruled rule in, in life. It never failed even though there was like 400 years of no revelation. It still never failed because God's original intent is always his original intent. Nothing can break his original intent. His original intent is his mind, is his will, is what he desired. It cannot be broken. It needs to be restored. So my job in life is to get back there. When sickness hit my body, if I can just get back there. Because there is not healing. It's health. There is not even debt free. It's unlimited provision. So when I experience some adversity in my life, say, oh, we got to get back there. Say, we got to get back there. We got to get back there. God has always been looking for us to get back there. 
Jesus came for us to get back there. Folk been praying for you to get back there. My grandmama prayed for me and I got back there. When you going through something, if you can just get back there. You got some cousins that's going to get back there. You got some family members that's going to get back there. So when we get saved and we become a new person in Christ Jesus, it's as if God in the moment, wherever church you was at, if you was at a 7-Eleven when you got saved, in that moment, you went back there. But God told me something different. Can I get another person, please? Right, yeah, right here. Face the crowd. You're going to represent me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Right then, I'm a new creation. And I seem like I would take you back there. But in actuality, God goes back there and brings him to you. God brings original creation intent back to you wherever you at. So if it's the millionaire, if it's authority there, everything he said in the beginning, he brings it to you when you become a new creation. It's as if he's creating man all over again. Okay. If he creates you all over again when you get saved, that means you're back. The original comes to you. Now we got to look at what does that original look like? See, when your faith operates from this realm, it ain't going to take five days to get a breakthrough. It's not going to take, listen to me, it's not going to take a year of your salary to feed the 5,000. It's 5,000 that need it, you produce it right there on the spot. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to a new creation that if you wake up to you who you at, you're going to remove time out of your life. It's coming a season right now that this new creation about to take dominion over time because time that kept you in bondage too long. Why are you waiting? I'm telling you, if I hear another person in my life tell me that they waiting on payday, I'm going to shake you up myself. How are you waiting on something that you already got? God daily loads you with benefits. I'm waiting on my healing. No, get healed. This is a favorite one that faith, faith folks love to say. I'm waiting on my manifestation. Why? Why are you waiting on manifestation? Manifest. This all in line with what you've already been talking about. We quote the scripture. The whole creation is waiting for what? The sons of God to what? Manifest. So that means creation is waiting on you to manifest. Who's stopping you then? You know what's stopping us? A lack of revelation. Amen. Say I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. Okay, here we go. A new creation, you must operate in faith from that aspect. A new creation, he will in fact live in the way of the new creation. So we just call, oh, I'm a new creation. No, 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 no. I'm being a new creation means that I live in the way of a new creation. 
If you're not living in the way, that means the new creation, therefore, has a special way of living. And if we don't know what it is, how can we operate as a new creation when we don't even know what the life look like? If you don't know what it looked like, look at Adam before he fell. If you don't know what it looked like, look at Jesus. Jesus walked as new creation. Anytime he had a need, he accessed heaven. Anytime Adam wanted produce, God gave him seed and dominion. (laughs) Anytime Jesus needed something, he opened his mouth. Why? Because he's a speaking spirit. In Christ, you are a new creation. He will, in fact, live in the way of the new creation and look and manifest the characteristics of the new creation, which means the new creation has characteristics that you should be manifesting on a daily basis. New creation, it literally means your spirit was recreated. Your spirit. Why is this important? Why am I teaching you this? Because the day we're living in, you got to know how to produce out of your spirit. If you ain't producing out of your spirit, you still in Lodabar. That's where Mephibosheth was at. Remember him? Lame in his knees, but had an inheritance. David says, is there anyone left from the, from the king's palace, from Saul's household? Mephibosheth, he's still there, but he lame. You know what David said? Go get him. What that mean, go get him? That's what God's telling you today. I'm getting you today. I'm coming, y'all better, y'all, y'all better receive. He coming after you today. He coming to get you. He coming to raise you up out of the conditions you've been in to a new level of faith that you ain't never experienced before in your life. And as a matter of fact, the angels of the Lord is still trying to figure you out because they trying to say they look like God, but I don't see them operating like God. What in the world is happening? But I am here today to announce to you that you are getting up out of where you've been and going to where God got you going in the name of Jesus. In this, before this series is over, you gonna understand that you are not about to operate by the sweat of your brow another day in your life. Y'all been toiling too hard in y'all businesses. Y'all been toiling hard trying to make ends meet. Y'all been trying to toil to produce and manifest. And all you got to do is know who you are and open your mouth and say what God said. And you going to see what you said. There's a characteristics that as a new creation you're supposed to be walking in. And you're going you're gonna to get it. In Christ, any man, any person, in Christ is what? A new creation. Born anew. You born from heaven. Earth not even your home. You ain't even from here. I bet 99% I'll come to you after service and ask you where you from, and you're going to tell me some doggone Illinois or some Alabama. You ain't from Alabama. You from heaven. You too big for Indiana. You too big for Illinois. You too, you too big for the South. 
What are we doing? We breaking limits off of your thinking. I'm telling you, you better not tell another person in your life you waiting on nothing. At creation, God bless them and said to them, be fruitful. Multiply. Feel replenished. Say replenish. Replenish. That means restore to formal fullness. That means you got a capacity to go in a dry place and build that thing up. There is a dominion of innovation that's getting ready to hit this people here. That you gonna have dreams and ideas that's downloaded from the Holy Ghost. That you gonna say, where did it come from? See y'all ain't okay. Yeah. Did you pay for your salvation? Did you pay for your healing? Your salvation is the most important thing in your life. Let me ask you again as I'm wrapping this up. Did you pay for your salvation? Hmm. So why you got to pay for the building? Why you got to pay for your house? You got to learn how to open your mouth. Yo, come on. You want to know how to operate a new creation? Faith. Peter. We owe taxes. Go to the lake. Throw in a line. The first fish that come up, open his mouth. You will find some gold. Pay my taxes and yours. Supernatural cancellation by a creative idea. But if you keep operating in the flesh, if you keep talking about somebody holding you back, can't nobody hold you back. You are the image of almighty God. You are the splitting image of Jesus Christ. Who is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you visited him. For you made him a little load of angels. If you read the commentaries, that was as if the angels was asking God. The angels, because you know they've been, been there before you, right? Angels weren't created at the same time man was created. Remember, Lucifer went against God. He was kicked, hurled out of heaven. This is before man was ever created. So you got a whole host of heaven when, when man is formed and they are around God and they see this happening. And they say, God, who is this God? Who is this person? They look just like you. And not only do they look like you, Lord, you have given them dominion over us. That means, Lord, when they say something, I got to obey. If they give me a command, I got to fight. If they give me an order, I got to come with a host and tear everything up trying to affect their life. You mean to tell me that a person can stop your destiny when you are in the image of God? (laughs) 
old man operating in faith or new man operating in faith? Who you think going to win? Manifestation going to take too long when you're trying to operate in faith and you're still insecure. Trying to operate in faith and you don't even like yourself. Operating in faith and you still comparing yourself to other folk. Operating in faith and you ain't uniquely who you called to be. But there's a new creation faith. And this is a genuine faith and trust that's birthed out of my spirit. That when I know I am fearfully and wonderfully made, can't nobody stop my faith. When I know I'm the image of Almighty God, I can say a thing and see a thing. When I know that I'm created in his image and after his life, when I say sickness, bow down, you know it got to bow down because you're dealing with the wrong person. You ain't dealing with old Jawan, devil. You dealing with new Jawan. And new Jawan might look the same, but my power is so much greater. I said your power is so much greater. I'm telling you, you better raise up. You better get aggressive about this thing. Because I'm telling you, the devil been scared of you all your life. Why you think he tried to take out Moses? Why you think he tried to take out Jesus? Why you think he didn't try to take out of you since you've been a child? Because he saw you. In all your life, he been trying to stop original intent from invading your life. But somebody was praying for you. Somebody was fasting for you. Somebody was interceding for you. Somebody was on their knees for you. And they couldn't stop you going to the altar. I went to the altar high. You hear what I said? I'm going to tell you the truth. When the old man come to the altar, the old man crucified at the altar, and the new man arise. The devil tried to stop me, but I had a cousin. We both went in church. And he came to me, we was out three, it was about three, four o'clock in the morning doing crazy stuff. He said, man, you want to go to church? I said, man, I need to smoke another blunt. (laughs) Oh, no, okay, y'all, y'all. Why am I, why am I? Why am I saying this? Because he know the original intent getting ready to show up. And if it show up, dominion showing up. Authority showing up. New creation getting ready to show up. So he said, let's go anyway. So I got high on the way there and I got to church and the pastor was preaching. And while I'm sitting in the pew, I felt like a tap on my shoulder. And I heard, go up. And when I went up, the old man died. And the new man came forth. Now this new man is a force to be reckoned with. Ain't no devil gonna stop me. My daughter can go to heaven and I'm still coming after him. You think I ain't done? 
I got a chip on my shoulder. I'm a new creation. I'm going to deliver every soul I can. Heal every cancer I can. Raise the dead. Heal the sick. And I don't do it in my own strength. I am a new creation. You know what? It don't mean nothing to me. You can sit down all you want to. But if you take this teaching today, you can step out and get something done. Because the only thing that's stopping you is this body. But you're not your body. You are spirit. I'm done, I'm done, the old man faith, new man faith. Which one gonna win, y'all? <laughs> Glory! <laughs> Say I'm a new creation. <laughs> Say I'm a new creation. The creation has been waiting for you to show up. That's why when you get ready to connect with this new partnership, they're going to say it's something about you. Why? Sit down, sit down. Because it is something about you. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works that was preordained that you shall walk in them. For we are God's workmanship. That means you're God's handiwork. That means you're God's masterpiece. Say, I'm God's masterpiece. Say, I'm God's masterpiece. Say, I'm God's masterpiece. If you God's masterpiece, then you got no business looking at yourself low. You got to know you God's masterpiece to operate in new creation faith. And the works that he has is already laid out for you. All you got to do is walk in them. Authentic faith only flows properly when you have a revelation of your true identity that reflects your true image. Now you can stand to your feet. <laughs> Let's give him praise today. Come on, let's give him glory today. So God brings to you his original intent. The moment you said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be my Savior, my Lord, he brought original intent to you. He brought everything that he created for man in the beginning. He brought it right to you. And he said he blessed them. That means he empowered you to prosper. He invested in you. So we're going to be talking about a five-fold characteristic of what comes with the new creation. Number one is a supreme enablement. Say supreme enablement. That means you are enabled to do whatever needs to be done to get the job done and manifest the kingdom on earth. Say, I got an enablement. I got an enablement. Number two is supreme production. That means you are a walking manufacturing production center. 
that means you have the capacity to produce on the spot whatever's sown in your heart. Now you know why I said you will never be in lack another day in your life. Say, I'll never be in lack. What you just did is sow the seed into your production center. Now I'm going to do this. I command you to produce. You will never be sick another day in your life. I command you to produce. You ain't waiting on nobody to produce nothing. You produce. Anything you sow in your heart, you have the capacity to produce it. And you don't got to wait. You are a powerhouse. You got the ability to speak to stuff in your life that don't belong there and call that stuff to leave your life. Now produce it. Three, supreme increase. As a new creation, you operate in supreme increase. Supreme restoration, innovation, and creativity. Say new creation. A new creation creates. You don't need nobody to give nothing to you. You can create it. And number five, supreme authority. Next time, I'm going to be dealing with supreme authority that you are a dominion spirit. And as a dominion spirit, you have the authority and the capacity to put every devil to flight in your life and dominate like God called you to dominate. You did not come to this earth to be dominated. You did not come to be rolled over. But God is raising us up to put things back in charge and back in order. And I'm telling you, it's happening right now. Let's give them praise. Hallelujah. 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 Say, I am a walking production center. I am able to produce every promise of God out of my spirit because I'm a new creation. When I sow the word of God in my heart, I have the power to produce it. Look at somebody say produce, 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 produce. Produce. Now look, because you got the power to produce, you are never to go to bed worried another day in your life. I say you are never to go to bed worried another day in your life because you our production manufacturing company. You can produce it on the spot. Father, we thank you today. Heads bowed and eyes are closed. If you're here today, you say, you know what? I've been living outside of what God called me to live. And that being the case, that means I'm operating in the old. When I know that God got something new for me. If you're here today and you say, you know what? I'm tired of doing the old stuff. I'm ready to do the new, the fresh, the new and the fresh. Today is your day. 
My heads are bowed and eyes are closed. It said, if any person is engrafted in Christ, he is a new person. The way you become a new person today is just by receiving Jesus Christ into your heart. And we're going to do that at this moment. Maybe you are saying, you say, I'm a new creation, but I've been using the old way of doing things, acting like the old self, blocking myself from everything that God has for me. But I desire to recommit my life to God. Well, we all, all come together and we're going to say a prayer. The Bible says, if we call on the name of the Lord, we shall be saved. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to call on the name of the Lord. So say this with me, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. I receive your love, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for saving me. Thank you that I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old has passed away and behold I am new. Father fill me with your Holy Spirit with power and praying in tongues by faith I receive in Jesus name. Come on lift your hands to the Lord and begin to pray in the Spirit. If you've never prayed in the spirit, the moment you pray that prayer in faith, you receive. Come on, open up your mouth and let the Holy Ghost pray through you. If you're watching online, open your mouth and let the Holy Ghost pray through you. Come on, church, begin to pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, you can put your hands down. If you pray that prayer, maybe you gave your life to God for the very first time. Maybe you say, you know what, I'm recommitting my life back to Jesus because I'm not going to live in the old. Maybe someone here, you pray and you begin to pray in the spirit. As an act of faith and boldness, I want you just to raise your hands to the Lord so that way we can acknowledge you at this time. Our staff officers are going to hand you a Bible promise book. Keep your hands raised as your act of courage and boldness. Inside that Bible promise book is the word of God. And it's for you to sow it into your heart by reading it, confessing it. Your life will be changed. Also in that Bible promise book, there is a birth certificate, two, two pages. Fill out the top copy for yourself. Keep that and tear off that second copy. And when you are dismissed today, there are some slots in the back of the sanctuary. Just drop it in there. Amen. We thank you for making this decision. And because for those that are a new creation, I declare that you are blessed. And I speak upon your life, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the beasts on the field, and every creepy thing that creeps upon the earth, I declare to you, flow in your dominion in Jesus' name. Let's give God praise for all of those that gave their life to the Lord. Amen. And if you're watching online, you'll see ways that you can receive Christ into your life. Make sure you take the opportunity to use that QR code or you can put it in the comment section. I'm saved. I really committed my life. I was filthy.